what it is, it's Brother Tyvon Swain L. He was Karani on Corner, Episode 3. Um, again, I was watching uh, Speaker's Corner, and I saw my brother Shamsi was, uh, he had a couple different interactions this last week, and he interacted with my brother Cameron and my brother Ahmed. So uh, I got a couple different ep episodes for this one, because uh, I see there's a couple, a few different topics to touch, and I might touch on a few more later on this week as well. But as you can see, I got a question for Brother Shamsi. What does it say in the Quran about Hadith? Is the Quran the best Hadith, or is there Hadith after the Quran I should follow? Um, again, this is not me trying to, to start a fight with Brother Shamsi. This is uh, trying to have a respectful conversation on the matter. Um, and really just, just uh, bringing out what the Quran actually says on the matter. So... Um, you can kind of see this as a Quran challenge in a sense. Like, do you, like, do you have a like more of a study thing? Like, do you have a better verse speaking about this concept than what I got? Because um, when when I look at what the Quran says about Hadith, it heavily heavily influences my concept of being a Quranist, um, and not and not using the Hadith as as a as a source of jurisprudence. Again. I have no issue with my uh, with my uh, with my Sunni brethren uh, referencing hadith, studying hadith, etc. On the conversation with me, um, I only ask that when they speak about hadith and they they bring up a hadith that they can show me the same concept in the Quran. Um, if they can't show me the same concept in the Quran, I'm not really interested in the conversation. Um, but I'll show you why here. So let me share my screen real quick and uh, I'll make this a very short and sweet video uh, just breaking down what I understand the Quran to say about Hadith and uh, leaving a question for my brother Shamsi and, maybe, and, and again the question is just real simple what does the Quran say about it and can, can, can you show me something different than what I'm about to show you here Because here's one of the things that happens when, when we speak, uh, when most Quran speaks to speak to uh, other Muslims is uh, we'll speak about hadith being used in the Quran, and a lot a lot of Muslims will say, "Oh, well, that's not the proper usage of the word, and it means something different here than it does there." And yet, yeah, okay, that that's cool. Um, I can understand that concept because in Arabic you can go back and forth in language a little bit. However. Um, what I need to understand is, does the Quran ever stipulate hadith in the sense that you mean it, like in the hadith of, of Muhammad Sallallahu Because as, as a Quranist, most of us have a different argument. Um, and it's typically based off of these verses here. Um, so in Surah 39, Ayah 23, the fourth word used is al hadith. And what you see here is it says, Allah has sent down the best statement. Allah has sent down the best hadith. A consistent book wherein is reiteration. The skins shiver therefrom of those who fear their Lord. Then their skins and their hearts relax at the re remembrance of Allah. That is the guidance of Allah by which he guides whom he wills. And one whom Allah leaves astray, for him there is no guide. But it clearly stipulates that, that Allah has sent down the best hadith. So for me, um, again, I said this in my last video, in a sense, I consider myself a Sunni Muslim. In my last video, I broke down the concept of Sunnah Allah in the Quran. The Sunnah of Allah in the Quran. Um, and so based upon that Sunnah, whereas in you follow the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu I follow the Hadith of Allah Ta'ala. And it says here that Allah sent down the best hadith, a consistent book wherein there is re wherein is reiterate reiteration that the Quran is the best hadith. Moving forward, Surah four, Ayah eighty-seven, hadith is a seventeenth word used there, hadithan. And again, I know I, I understand that these are different incarnations of the same word, right? 
And so if you want to correct me on usage or how I'm, I'm talking about it or how I'm referencing it from the Quran, cool. All I ask is that you show me a Quran verse that, that explains what you're saying to me. I'm against Surah 4, I had 87, the 17th word. Allah, there is no deity except him. He will surely assemble for you uh, account on the day of resurrection by which there is no doubt. And who is more truthful than Allah in statement? Who is more truthful than Allah in Hadith? So, a lot of people like to talk about Isnad and chains of narration and this, that, and the third. Um, my chain of narration and my Isnad come from the prophets. Again, in my previous video, when I spoke about the Sunnah Allah, it specifies that the Sunnah. And maybe, you know what, let me drop into it right here because I got these on my same notes. It breaks down the concept that the Sunnah has come down to our to, to the previous messengers. This is our established way for those we had sent before you of our messengers and you will find, you will not find in our way any alteration. So it says Sunnah twice there, right? 1771. This is our established way. This is our sunnah. We, again, this is Allah Humma. This is Allah and his angels, all that type of stuff. We have sent before you of our messengers, and you will find you will find not you will not find, excuse me, in our way any alteration. So in all these verses here, again, I'll go, I'll go uh, Surah 33 again. Um, There is not to be upon the prophet any discomfort concerning that which Allah has imposed on him, the established way of law, with those uh, who have passed on before, and ever is the command of Allah, destiny is decreed. So it came down before, again. This is the established way of law with those who passed on before, and you will not find in the way of law any change. So again, this concept of, of the sunnah of Allah, sunnah of Allah, being an unaltered thing an unaltered concept from prophet to prophet that's my it's not so 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 my chain of narration is, is prophets right um i understand for a lot of people the chain of narration is is a uh, person to person through like the the sahih bukhari and, and, and other hadith etc um, i can i'm cool that works for you that does not work for me right i if that works for you, I'm not disparaging you for that. I'm explaining why it does not work for me. It does not work for me because because the Quran that the Prophet Sallallahu gave us stipulates that Allah is 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 the most truthful in Hadith. And I'm gonna I just said that the, the Quran that Allah gave us right that, that, that gave us through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right. Um, I'm gonna explain that in a, in a different video. Because I see where Brother Shamsi is talking about this concept of, oh, you trust translators more than you trust trust the trust the the companions or whatnot. Um, I'm definitely going to make a separate video about that because that's an interesting topic that deserves to get to, to get a uh, dealt with specifically and, and and not sidetracked on. But moving forward, like I said, so Allah is the most truthful in Hadith. And he sent down the best hadith in the Quran. So for me, as someone who who follows the Sunnah of Allah, in in that sense, considers myself a Sunni in a way, in concept, right? And I can understand the concept of being Sunni. I'm asking y'all to understand that my hadith is the Quran. My isnad are the previous prophets, and the prophets lost them because the Sunnah. Is unchanged through through what the prophets brought and what the prophet and what uh, the prophets of lost land brought. That's what the Quran stipulates. Moving forward, it stipulates in Surah twelve in a few different spots that Allah teaches the interpretation of hadith. So again, this is the sixth word, or excuse me, this is the seventh word used in the sixth ayat of of, of uh, Surah twelve. And this is speaking about Joseph. And uh, you, 
for people who are familiar with Joseph in the in the biblical context, um, Joseph is, or if you're not familiar, here's a little breakdown. Joseph is a character. He's he's the son of Jacob. Um, he has he has eleven brothers. Um, his brothers get jealous of him. They sell him into slavery, or they sell it. Yeah, they sell him into slavery. Um, he goes into Egypt. Um, he rises to power. He ends up aiding his family in the, in a time of need. But he has this ability to interpret dreams. And this ability to interpret dreams is, is partially what got his brothers to be jealous of him. And it also helps him rise to power in Egypt. So this is what the Quran says about that concept. And thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of narratives. The interpretation of hadith. Al-Hadith. Right. And complete his favor upon you and upon the family of Jacob as he completed uh, it upon your fathers before Abraham and Isaac. Indeed, your Lord is knowing and wise. Goes on to say in the same chapter, same sword, Ayat 21. The 23rd uh, word used is Allah Hadithi again. Again, the concept is Allah teaches us the interpretations of Hadith. And the one from Egypt who bought him said to his wife, make his residence comfortable and perhaps he will benefit us or we will adopt him as a son. And thus we establish Joseph in the land that we might teach him the interpretation of events, the interpretations of Hadith. And the law is predominant over his affair, but most of the people do not know. And again, it stipulates in, in uh, Surah 12, Ayah 101, the ninth word is same concept. Same concept again. The law is teaching the interpretation of Hadith. He's the teacher thereof. Not any man. The law is the teacher thereof. My Lord, you have given me. This is Joseph talking. You have given me of sovereignty and taught me of the interpretation of dreams, of events, of tales, of Hadith, El Hadith, creator of the heavens and earth. You are my protector in this world and the hereafter. Cause me to die a Muslim and join me with the righteous. Now, these next three ayats are something that I really ask my Muslim brothers to to uh, to comprehend or, or to to contemplate. And 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 understand that these weigh heavily on a lot of what I have to say, what uh, my feelings on the concept of Hadith. Because at first it's, it stipulates that Allah is the is, has sent down the best hadith and he's the most truthful of hadith and what this says here is it asks the same question three times defiantly and I really 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 ask my brethren to pay attention to this Surah 7 ayah 185 the 20th word used there is hadith and the law asks the defiant question of what hadith after this will you follow do they not look into the realm of the heavens and the earth and everything that Allah has created and think that perhaps their appointed time has come near? So in what hadith, what statement hereafter will they believe? So in what hadith after this will they believe? So in what hadith hereafter will they believe? That's, that's a big question. Defiant question is that, at, at that. Now it gets it gets even more clear in, in, in the next in the next sec section, right? Sir so 45 I 68 were used. Same word. These are the verses of Allah which we recite to you in truth. Then in what statement after Allah and his verses will they believe? In what hadith after Allah and his verses will they believe? This this doubles down on on, on the first uh surah ayat that I brought out, right? And the fact that he sent down the best hadith. So he's saying, check this out. These are the verses of Allah, which which we recite to you in truth. That's not talking about the prophet reciting them to us. That's the prophet and his that, that, that's the law and his angels reciting that to the to the prophet. You feel me? These are the verses of Allah which we recite to you in truth. Then in what statement after Allah and his verses will they believe? It doesn't get any clearer than that for me, right? That the that that's a challenge to me when I read that. That okay, I'm supposed to take this book and not anything after that. 
when someone tries to attach something to this book, saying that I need it with, with this book to understand this book. No, 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 no. It's saying I'm not supposed to believe those verses. I'm supposed to believe these verses. I'm not supposed to believe those statements. I'm supposed to believe the statements in the Quran. And then again, it asks the same question in Surah 77, Ayah 50. Second word used is, is Hadith. Then in what statement, in what Hadith after the Quran will they believe? Bam. It can't get any clearer than that. The best Hadith sent down is the Quran. And Allah asks, in, in what statement what hadith after these verses and after this Quran will they believe so for me i don't have any authority given by allah through his prophet in the quran to believe any other hadith but the quran and these are what i would really really like my brother to address these verses here now again, I'm I have no issue with y'all studying the hadith, the hadith for for uh, for historical purposes, for personal study, etc. But when you tell me I need them for I, I need them for for jurisprudence, and that I'm not a Muslim unless I impl employ them for jurisprudence, then this this is this is where we 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 uh, we we, uh, we gotta meet each other in the Quran. We get, you gotta make this make sense to me. How is it that I just showed you? I just showed you where Allah is the best in hadith. He sent down the best hadith in the Quran. Ask me the question of what hadith after the Quran I'm going to follow. And then breaks this down to me. Sir, 31, ayah 6. The sixth word uses hadith again. But there are among men those who purchase idle tales, those who purchase hadith without knowledge or meaning to mislead men from the path of Allah and throw ridicule on the path. For such there will be a humiliating penalty. So we just we just we just went over this concept of Sanata Allah, the way of Allah, right? And it says here in the Quran that there will be those who purchase idle tales, purchase hadith, right? That aren't the Quran. The Quran is not an idle tale. Without knowledge or meaning. But these hadith have note that they're without knowledge or without meaning to mislead men from the path of Allah. Or it could be it mean the concept of these men had no knowledge that the hadith was misleading. That's that's how I read that. Because my brothers who follow the hadith, they're sincere. I see it in them. They they believe that that they're the words of the Prophet, they should be respected. I can understand that concept. But here's something that I want my people to understand. My brother, my brother Shamsi said in a video that the prophet gave a prophecy about people who will reject the hadith and follow the Quran alone. That he gave a prophecy, then he cited a hadith outside of the Quran to say it. Now, understand it. He said there was a prophecy given by the prophet outside of the Quran. A prophecy given by the prophet outside of the Quran. And the Quran just told me Ask me what hadith will I follow after the Quran? So I got a question. Did that prophecy come from the prophets lost them? And if it did, why is it not in the Quran? Why is a prophet giving a prophecy in something other than his message? But here's what it said again. But there are among men, those who purchase idle tales without knowledge or meaning to mislead men from the path of the law. And throw ridicule on the path. For such there will be a humiliating humiliating penalty. Now those are the ones who do, do it on purpose, the humiliating humiliating penalty, right? For me, I see my brother I see a lot of my brethren following the so called sunnah. And I say the so called sunnah because until someone shows me the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu being something other than the Sunnah of Allah. I can't call what you call the sin. I can't call the sinner what you call the sinner. I see you sincerely following something you believe to be the sinner. But until otherwise, the Quran's telling me people using Hadith after this Quran and calling it the sinner. Like, 
it's being people are being misled from the path of Allah, the Sanat Allah with that concept. So, and to be clear, it doesn't say Sanat Allah in that verse right there. Just just so just to be clear with the family, but it does say the path of Allah, not the path of anyone else. And here's why this is, I, I, I got to point this out. For me, this is why I can't accept hadith other than the Quran. And I can't, I can't accept another. It's not other than the prophet and the previous prophets before him. Is this here? Surah 6, I 112. And thus we have made for every prophet an enemy. Devils from, a man, from mankind and jinn, inspiring to one another decorative speech in delusion. But if... If your Lord had willed, they would not have done it. So leave them and that which they invent. So if there's people that the Quran is telling you are purchasing idle tales without knowledge for the purpose of misleading people of the path of Allah, misleading people from the path and throwing ridicule on the path. I'm asking my brothers to have a little bit of respect for what I'm talking about, from Brother Ahmed's talking about, for Brother Cameron's talking about at the part. And the council was saying, hey, we we choose to only derive our sunnah from the Quran because it's the best hadith. And in it is 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 prescribed the sunnah to Allah. So my question is this, if the is one, is the Quran the best hadith? That should be a simple yes for every, every Muslim listening. Two, if the Quran is the best hadith, why are you saying I'm not following the sunnah of the prophet or the sunnah of Allah by just following the Quran? If it's the best hadith, and it and within it challenges me to not use any other hadith that come after it. Why am I wrong for using the Quran and just the Quran in terms of 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 uh, uh, choosing it as hadith over the rest of them? Now again, I'm not saying you're wrong for using the 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 hadith. I don't have an issue with that. Now we're definitely going to get into a little squabble if it turns into like, oh, you need it for you need it for jurisprudence. Because, no, nah, I don't see that anywhere. In fact, I I see that if I use them for jurisprudence, I'm going to be misled from the path of the law. And that they may be decorative speech in delusion. So, respectfully, I ask my brethren. Please review these verses. If you have better verses that better explain your concept and, and, and shed light on why I need the hadith outside of the Quran, please show them to me. I do not want to be incorrect in, in how I in how I uh, follow the sunnah of Allah, the sunnah of Allah. With that, I say salam alaikum and peace and love family.